almost matches my dress. It kind of clashes. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We are delighted to have so many of you here today. We want to welcome our church family, which includes you Gloss students. You know you're part of our church family, at least nine and a half months of a year. We want to welcome our visitors, and we want to welcome the parents that are here today, um, the music student parents and any other parents. And we just want to thank you for sharing your kids with us. We uh, enjoy having them here. That It's a privilege. And we miss them when they're gone. We hope that uh, they, they get to stay for years and years, but apparently it's only a four-year school. So, um, And most of them do it that way. There we go. I, I can't see all my notes because there's so much to talk about today. But first, Jake is going to um, do a little uh, announcement for us. Good morning, church. We have a line of business to take care of this morning. I want to turn your attention to a first reading of transfers in your bulletin. Transferring in, we have Beth, Ben, Will, and Wesley Wallace from Owasso. Transferring out, Craig, Donna, Andrew Cleveland from or to Mission Church in British Columbia, Canada. So please see the pastor or the board of elders with any concerns. Thank you. All right, and then the pastor has an announcement. Good morning. We have a wonderful opportunity to participate in a live nativity this evening. Some of you know that you're participating. So we'll meet here at 4.30. Those of you who are participating with me, and we'll go through kind of the, a little sketch of what we're doing, and then we'll meet there before 5.15 and get set up, and then we'll bless many people in this community. So if you're coming, what time do you meet me here? 4.30. Thank you so much. Okay. And then one more announcement from uh, Mr. Gardner, Todd. Todd. <laughs> Good morning, church family and visitors. We are very excited and really blessed that um, this church has what's called a Christmas offering every year. It's um, basically a, should we say, we look for something that is special and we make a focus on it during the month of December and we encourage people to make a contribution to it. You've seen my face up here several times and um, we wanted to just bring attention to Daniel's Kitchen and we're really glad that the church has decided that Daniel's Kitchen would be the uh, church offering for the month of December. Now, what that means is that if you feel compelled to, by the Spirit, to make some sort of a donation, we would ask that you just put it in your tithe envelope and just mark it Daniel's Kitchen on it. But it just gives a, a special a focus on that. We are really thrilled, and we've got a short uh, video clip that we'd like to show you at this time, and that video will give you just a glimpse of where we are uh, as far as the building. Many people in town come and peek in the windows, and they keep asking the same question, when are we opening? And really soon, the Lord is blessing us right now uh, with a stove, with an oven, and uh, we're real thrilled about that. And we have an open house that's coming up on the 13th, so let's run that video clip.
Amen. What they didn't show you is that we did go in through the back of the safe and make a storage room for it. The, the front's still there, but now it can be used for, for food storage and dishes. Um, also, next week, when we have our special Christmas program, which I'll talk about in just a second, we're going to have special um, envelopes that you can put your Daniel's Kitchen Christmas offering in, and we'll be hanging it on the, on the Christmas tree. So um, next week, you'll have a special envelope that you can put your check or, or money in, and uh, we'll have a Christmas ornament inside it that you can use to hang it on the tree during our offering time. All right. Um, I apologize, we're going a little long, but I just need to make sure that you know everything that's going on. The bulletin tells um, most of it, um, but today at 1, um, we are giving away coats and giving away food along with the um, Edmore Methodist Church, 1 o'clock um, at the en Endeavor Center. And uh, the, our goal was to raise, or not to raise, but to bring uh, 100 coats to give away. And I just have, someone just gave me a count. We have, ra uh, <laughs> we have uh, donated, there's my word, we have donated 136 coats to this congregation. So praise the Lord. Um, that's at 1 o'clock today. Then the Nativity Walk um, is open to everybody from 5.30 to 8. Um, there's an insert in your bulletin about that. And then tonight, um, a special Christmas program at 7 o'clock here with our Gloss students. We're looking forward to that. Tomorrow, um, Women's Ministry and Ornament Exchange, there's an insert on that. And um, then, let's see, we just got to get everything important done here. Thursday, Daniel's Kitchen Open House from 9 to 5. And then Friday at, at 6.30, the elementary school will have their Christmas program here, and we're looking forward to that. And then one last thing, next Sabbath, we are having uh, the church choir um, is having a Christmas cantata. There's a bulletin insert. Um, people come that, that don't come to church regularly, there's two times a year where they often do come to church. What, what two times are those? Christmas and Easter. We have an opportunity. We've been putting some of these flyers out in the neighborhood. You're welcome to also take, take them. This is a good opportunity to invite people that might not come to church um, to come to a special program. There won't be a sermon per se, and it's all Christmas music, and uh, it's a beautiful cantata that praises the Lord. So good time to invite friends, neighbors, and someone that might not regularly come, and we're looking forward to that. Okay, it's now time for us to transition into our worship time. For our call to worship, I am just reading the last verse of Hymn 119, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Saints, before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship. Come and worship. Worship Christ, the newborn king. Through prayer, through the word of God, we ask, dear Father, that you would saturate our hearts in your love. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, church family. Our first song for song service is going to be O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which is page 115 in the hymnal. the first Noel, which is number 118 in the hymn. No. 
going to be infant holy infant lowly please stand number one's 27 For today's offering appeal, I wanted to share a true story about a little girl. She loved the Lord and longed to share the message of Jesus to those in the mission field. She contributed a penny to a missionary to help in the work of evangelizing the people of Burma. The missionary was so touched by the little girl's response that he decided to do the most he could with that little penny. After careful thought, he bought a tract and personally gave it to a young chief. The chief would not admit that he could not read, but he burned with a desire to know the contents of the leaflet. He traveled 250 miles to find someone who would read it to him. After hearing the gospel message, it was not long before the young chief made a decision for Jesus. Returning to his people, he told them what God had done for him. Later, he invited missionaries to come and share Jesus with the village. Many tribesmen accepted the good news and were converted. All this, and probably more, resulted from one dedicated penny given by a little girl who gave from her heart. So this morning, as we give, let's dig deep into our pockets and give for our hearts for God's cause. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for the gifts you give us. Thank you for providing for us. So Lord, not only that we can provide for ourselves, but in turn give back and provide for others. Bless the money that's gathered this morning. May it go far and wide for your work, that your soon 
return will be quickened. And Lord, please let this money uh, save lives, save lives for your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's time now for our children's story. The money collected will go for the CLE Worthy Student Fund. The children can find the baskets to collect the money in the front and the back. And when we meet, since we have the tables up here, we're going to be meeting over here by the Christmas tree. So kids, come collect all the money.
Welcome, everyone. Let's go ahead and have a seat. It's kind of crowded today, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, a long time ago, when some of your grandparents were little kids, there was a girl named Annie. Oh, and Annie lived with her grandparents in a small white house on the top of the hill. And if you looked, there was the house up here on the top of the hill, and then on the bottom there was this railroad track. And if you went across the hill a little bit, there was her cousin's house. She loved playing with her cousin named George. And she loved being with her grandparents, and her grandparents loved her. And they didn't have very much money, but because things were very tight back then. But she didn't really care. She loved it. Well, one day, she was sitting in her house, and she heard a knock, knock. And Grandpa answered the door, and it was the landlord. Now, they were good friends with the landlord, and so she didn't think much of it. But the landlord said, you know, the money's due today. And Grandpa sort of said, I, I don't know how going to do it. And he was kind of whispering with him. He's like, you see, it's Christmas soon, and I, I don't even, I'm choosing between Christmas and food or, or rent, and it's just, can you give me a little bit of extension of time? And the landlord said, well, you have until New Year's Day, but I really, I need to get that money. And Annie was worried when she heard that, and her shoulders just kind of sagged. She thought to herself, oh no. And that night when she went to bed, she couldn't fall asleep. And she kept turning back and forth and back and forth on her bed. And she couldn't sleep. And so she opened the door and she kind of creeped over. And she was going to go talk to gr Granny and Grandpa about it. And so she, when she went to their room, she saw that they were awake too. But they were kneeling at their bed. And then she heard Grandpa praying. And he said, oh Lord. I don't know what to do, but please help us. Please help us get food that we can pay the rent. And she thought to herself, hmm, I wonder if God's going to hear that prayer. And the next day, it was school, and it was a cold day, and it was all snowy like the ones we've had. It was in December. So she went off to school, and she kept thinking, I wonder if God's going to hear Grandpa's prayer. And on the way from school, she was kind of skipping along on the railroad tracks, and she kind of slipped. And she slipped down to this snow drift, and her hit hit something. And it was loud, and it was hard. And she thought to herself, huh, I wonder what on earth's here. So she got down on her hands, and she started feeling. And sure enough, there was something there. There was a can. And she thought to herself, huh, I wonder what's inside it. And she wanted to see if there was a label on it, but there was no label. And it was all bent and like, it was just a can. And so she was like, huh, I wonder if there's more cans. So she got on the ground, she started feeling and feeling. And sure enough, there were bunches and tons of cans. And so she grabbed three cans and she ran to grandma's to her house up the hill all the way, and she put the can on the table, and she said, Grandma, 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 God has given us our Christmas miracle. And Grandma was like, whoa, 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 slow down. And she's like, you won't believe it. There are bunches of cans down there. And look, look, look what I found. And Grandma said, well, that sounds interesting. Let's see what's inside it. And so they opened the can, and you know what was inside it? Yeah, there was food, but it wasn't just any food. It was Annie's favorite fruit. It was canned peaches. And she hadn't had that in such a long time. And she was just, oh, wow, God gave us canned peaches. And then they opened the other can, and there were canned tomatoes. And she thought to herself, wow, Grandma can make so many nice stuff out of that, and soups, and oh. And she was getting really excited. And then Grandma's and Grandpa came out and he said, wow, I wonder where all those cans came from. 
you know, I'm going to go to the sheriff. Why don't you and George go down there with the wheelbarrow and get all the cans that you can and bring them up to the house. I'm going to see where all these cans came from. And so and ran down there with George, and they started putting all the cans in the wheelbarrow, but there were so many that when George tried to push the wheelbarrow, they kept falling over. So they decided they got a big rope, and they tied the rope around the wheelbarrow, and off they went, and Annie was like standing on the side to make sure none of the cans fell on the ground. And they got to the top of the hill, and they got to the house, and they were really excited. And Grandpa came back and he said, you know, I talked to the sheriff. And he thinks, do you remember, Grandma, that time when Mr. Cassie's store got all robbed and there was a whole bunch of cans that went missing? He thinks that might have been there from last year. So if we talk to Mr. Cassie, we might, we just need to talk to him. And no sooner than he said that, Mr. Cassie was knocking on the door. And he said, well, I think those are my cans, but I can't use them anymore. They don't have labels and they're all bulged up and stuff. So you guys can keep it. And Annie never forgot because there were lots of food. There were canned peaches and pineapples and tomatoes and peas and corn and jams and Concord jelly and all those yummy, yummy stuff in the pan and the cans, and they ate from that a long time. And every time they opened a can, she was reminded of her Christmas miracle. And I just think that's a beautiful story about how we can always help rely on God to answer <laughs> our needs and our prayers. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you listen to us and that you use even cans lost in the snow to answer our prayers and the littlest details. Thank you that you're always there for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. time now for our family prayer. As I'm praying, I will pause a few seconds to give each one a, a special moment, a silent prayer that they can pray if you guys have anything weighing on your hearts this morning. So as we're able, let's kneel together. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you on your holy Sabbath day, praising you for your goodness and mercy to each one of us. Lord, we thank you for the gifts you've given us, for the gift of music. Lord, we thank you for the young people up here sharing their talents with us this weekend. Lord, help us always to remember where the gifts come from. They come from you. And Lord, help us always to use those gifts to glorify your name. This Christmas season, Lord, a lot of people have a lot of things on their minds, but Lord, may we keep Jesus first this holiday season. And in doing so, may we find somebody to give Jesus the true gift to somebody this holiday season. Lord, we're all sinners needing forgiveness. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of these sins that keep us from you, that separate us from you. So, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness that we can be drawn closer and closer to you. This morning, each one of us has something or someone weighing heavy on our hearts. So, Lord, as we pause, hear our earnest prayers.
Lord, we lay all these requests at your feet, trusting that thy will be done. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us this morning, to prepare our hearts for the message that you have for each one of us. Please be with Pastor Gibbs as he speaks your words. Let those words go deep into our hearts this morning that we can be changed and leave different people. Lord, we thank you so much for being with us this morning. And we pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, church family. You know, usually when I come up here at this church and say good morning, it's because we're about to sing, but not today. Um, I'm asking that you turn with me in your Bibles to the scripture reading for today. It's found in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 22. And usually, um, not usually, but in the bulletin, it says that we're going to stop at verse 25, but we're going to continue reading until verse 32. So it'll be Luke 2, 22 through 32. And it says, Now when the days of purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice, <laughs> sorry about that, i got to turn the page. And to offer a sacrifice, as it is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves for two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Amen.
Praise God, huh? Amen. We certainly serve a mighty God. Just as we're in transition, if I could get the presentation on the screen. Happy Sabbath, church. I'd like to start with a word of prayer before I begin. Father, as we have a little space and time, this holy time, we're going to be looking into your word. We ask that you would look into our hearts and you would make there a place for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The sermon title is called Simeon's Secret. It may say something different in your bulletin. Ignore that. It's Simeon's Secret. Because last I checked, in Luke 2, it doesn't mention Simon at all. That could have been a, an error on my part and an autocorrect. We're going to be looking in Simeon's life. He has a secret of how he was the man he was. Let's look at this quote here. You, some, of, uh, some of the American Lit students may recognize this, this author. He says, words so innocent and powerless as they are, a, as standing in a dictionary, how potent for good and evil they become in the hands of one who knows how to combine them. Isn't that true? It's a scary truth, but it's a wonderful truth. Sometimes I want to be able to say things that, that have an impact. But sometimes, maybe often, I say things that they're coming out of my mouth, and I wish I could hit the air brake and try to like, catch them before they hit your ears and, and put them back where they belong. Have you ever had that experience? It's kind of the whole, what is it, the foot in, in mouth? Some, there's some doctors out here. Have you ever had someone come in with that problem that you had to like surgically remove a shoe or something that got stuck in there? Well, that happens more often than not. I, my wife's first impression of me was someone who readily had feet and mouth. But she gave me a chance and said, oh, he's okay. But I, I long for, to say things that could actually make a difference in the world, say things that are of truth and say things that, that actually help people out in, in whatever case they are. And Simeon had that. What is Simeon's secret? What is Simeon's secret? He said things that were wonderful. Let's, let's just go to the scripture reading. Luke chapter 2, verse 22, and we'll read through a little bit after 32. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. When someone offered that, what did that mean? They're extremely poor. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was a just and devout man, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit in the, into the temple, 
And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. In that story, we find Simeon's secret. So let's look at Simeon's secret. The secret of his words. If you can turn with me to Luke 28, we're going to be noticing Luke chapter 2 and verse 28. We'll be noticing a few things here. The reason why he said wonderful things is because he used wonderful words. Luke chapter 2 and verse 28 says, He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, What's the first word? Technically, it's not the first word. In Greek, the first word is, what's the first word? Yeah. Now. Simeon had this wonderful revelation that all of Israel at this time, they were waiting for God to do something. And Simeon has this awesome revelation right now, right this moment. God is in the action. He's in the present. He's not a future God. He's not a future Savior. He's a Savior right now. These are powerful words. The next word we want to highlight, you. He calls God you. You can go back to Mary's account and, and John the Baptist's father's account, and they always refer to God in the third person. But Simeon, he refers God in the second person. He's saying God, you're a relational God. I can talk to you as a person. You are right here, right now. Awesome words. And then he talks about hope. He says, there's a promise. God gave me a promise that before I die, I'll depart in peace because I will see the Lord's anointed. I will see the Messiah. I will see the Christ. And he knows when he goes to the grave, he has assurance of salvation. That's the gospel. Knowing the power of God and experiencing that power that he saves us, what hope does he bring us? And then all people. You, you read his writings and it says he's going to be a, for the Gentiles and for Israel, the, a light to the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. It's for everybody. So in our congregation, God's message is for everybody. So he, he's acting now. He's acting in a personal way. He's acting to give you hope and give you salvation, and he's doing it for every single person in this congregation. Only in this congregation? Beyond this congregation. He has powerful words. Can you imagine Simeon's words? What kind of impact they had? We're going to use some general statistics. So I'm not asking you to proof text to me, or I'm not asking you to, to critique my words. These are general outlines. About one quarter of the earth's population is Christian. Kind of, right? Yeah. And about once a year, that population reads the Christmas story. So every generation, we could say, has heard his words a quarter of the population. And from, from Luke taking his words and going forward, it's grown and grown and more and more people. Authors today would love if only 10% of the world's population heard of their name, let alone read their books. But Simeon has generations and generations and thousands and thousands and millions and perhaps billions of people who have heard his words. Simeon's secret is because he, he spoke good words. And Joseph 
And his mother marveled. And in a sense, we marvel at the truth of his words. He only makes one little appearance in the book of Luke. And boom! He's got an audience. Mary and Joseph marvel. We marvel as well. The secret of his words. What? Why was his, what, what's the secret of his words? This, it's, it's his obedience. We look at Luke 2, 27 and 28. It says, so he came. He obeyed. He followed the unction of what God was wanting him to do. Look at this quote. This is sweet. The officers, you know, the people who were spying on Jesus, the officers who were sent to Jesus came back with the report that never man spoke as he spoke. They, were just, they heard him, and they were supposed to, like, try to frame him, but they were just so entranced at the words of God, at the words of Christ. And they just listened, but the reason, but the reason for this was that never man lived as he lived. The reason why Simeon's words were powerful is because he obeyed. He listened. He obeyed. He lived out. Here's another quote from maybe, maybe the uh, English students will recognize this name. It's a powerful quote. Obedience alone gives the right to command. But we, we sometimes struggle with that. We like to give commands, but we don't necessarily like to follow those commands. So this is kind of like what we do. Do as I say, not as I do. Isn't this, don't we struggle with this? We want the academy students, we want the church members to do the right things, but, but don't pay attention to leaders. Academy students, you like that? No, we don't. What, what made Simeon so powerful is that he acted. He had wonderful obedience, so his words were wonderful. So what, made it, what was the secret of his obedience? It's how he heard things. Let's go to Luke chapter 2 and verse 26. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. So he heard something. He heard God speak, and he was willing to listen. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, your ears shall hear a word behind you. When the Hebrew says the word hear, what's packed in that word is listen. But in English, I'm, gonna, I'm going to throw myself in the doghouse right now. Yesterday, I was so tunnel visioned on what I was doing, my wonderful wife says, Jacob, I need help with something. I heard her. And she knows it. She's smiling at me. I heard her. She knows I heard her. But I wasn't listening. What's the difference? What's the difference between hearing and listening? Hearing, yeah, I physically, my, 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 my ear things, that's my technical term for it, ear things, the sound went in. It registered. But what does listening mean? I heard a rumble. I don't know if it's the right answer or not. What's that? Application, under, hearing with understanding and, and, and listening. That would be it. And so I failed yesterday. But Simeon, when he heard, he heard with understanding. He heard the meaning. It registered deep within. And not only that, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2 says, For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So not only do we want to hear with listening, we want to hear with listening and faith. Simeon heard with listening. He heard with faith and responded. So Simeon, that's my picture of Simeon. It's pretty accurate. 
I don't know where his neck is, but. So he, he's living his life, and he only knows what he's aware of. And so in this little bubble here, oh, it didn't show the bubble. Oh, man. Pretend there's a bubble. There. Oh, there's a bubble. You see it now. I don't know why it's showing up now, but see that bubble right there? Let's just pretend like you can see. We'll probably pretend. Do you see that light circle around it? That's all he's aware of. Outside of that bubble, he's oblivious. So sometimes God speaks to us, but we're not aware of it. Sometimes the God, and, we, and then because we're not aware of it, we say that God doesn't really exist. You only can really say that if you have all the knowledge of all the universe. But you don't. You have a little bubble around your little life. So if God speaks to you and you hear, that means you've, you've become aware, and then you can start listening. But then we have a decision to make. Do I listen by, with faith or not? It all boils down to choice. Simeon made that choice. What was the secret of Simeon's listening or hearing? It's a little bit of review. He could speak wonderful words because he was willing to obey. And he was, he was able to obey because he heard. He heard God. And what's the secret of Simeon? He was willing to live a life of constant connection with God. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation, encouragement, comfort of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. He was a just man. He wanted to do what was right in God's eyes. He was devout. He was, de he was dedicated. And he had a hope. He was waiting. He had a hope that, that God was going to do something. And that hope interwove into the being of his life. And he lived it out. Let's summarize this secret. This is a beautiful quote. It's from a, a letter in 19, or 1898. This, is, this will reveal to you, if you weren't paying attention at all to the sermon, pay attention now. <laughs> the Lord has been opening before me the fact that unless we receive the Holy Spirit, we shall lose every day. We lose our attitudes. We lose our, our cool. We lose precious moments of what could be. We lose every day. We are too content to live without the righteousness of Christ. Simeon was a man, just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. The secret of Simeon's life was that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. He was under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Habitually, he laid hold by faith of the cleansing, converting power, the renewing grace which makes a man one with God. He received communication from God. These communications were a revelation to him of divine secrets. It was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Thus the hope of the consolation of Israel to him, a personal hope, a living reality. Why was his word so powerful? This question that I asked is because he was willing to live with the Spirit of God every moment of the day. If you want to be able to say things that matter, you want to say things to your friends that, are, that really will help them if they're having a, a dark time. If you have family members, and this is a time that we get together with family members. If you want to be a word of encouragement, you want to be a consolation to them. Live your life so the Spirit of God at any moment can say something to you and you can listen. And then obey what He says so that when you tell other people that, they know it's true. They know it's true. So what is the secret of Simeon? It's living in a way that is receptive to the Spirit of God. Do you want Simeon's secret in your life? Praise God.
Praise God.
Our closing song is going to be, O oh Lord, Now Let Your Servant, number 67, please stand. great Sabbath day. Amen? Amen. Remember Simeon's secret. Open your heart so God can do amazing things with your life. Maybe your words will bless someone today if you let the Holy Spirit in. Maybe they will. Let's pray. Father, dear Father, you're sending us out with a secret revealed. The secret of the Holy Spirit changing a man, changing us. So we can be your hands and feet in this community. Lord, send us out with that blessing. The Holy Spirit blessing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.